I'm Nia Malika Henderson here with Wonk Fix. We've got Chris Eliza, Ezra Klein. We're going to preview Tuesday night's uh, debate. People pretty much generally agree that uh, that Obama lost that first debate. Mm -hmm. He lost it badly. Uh, going into Tuesday night, Chris, what do you think he's sure. got to do? I mean, <clears throat> I would say there's actually opportunity that exists for Obama in this debate because he set the bar, <laughs> maybe not intentionally, but he set <laughs> right. the bar so low, so low for himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did, love, I did love the, the spin coming out of the, the first debate from some Democrats, which was like, well, he purposely did poorly. <laughs> the rope of dope. Yeah, he purposely yeah. did poorly so that he can come back. Yeah. I don't think he purposely did poorly, but I do think it's likely that he will be better. I mean, I think he understands, He, to his credit, I think he is someone who is able to look at a performance, maybe not the night of or the next day, but a couple days after and say, oh, okay, I wasn't particularly good. He basically, he said I was bad right. in an interview with, to Diane Sawyer. My guess is he will be better. Now, uh, Ezra and I have talked about this before, and we have all talked about it. The idea that he's going to be Joe Biden is just yeah. false. Right. I mean, it's right. just, even if he tried to be Joe Biden in, in the vice presidential debate, I, I actually think that might be worse than what he did that in the first debate. Right. You, you can't be someone you're not. Barack Obama is not sort of fiery populist. He's, he's thoughtful, inspirational leader when he's at his best, and he's kind of uh, too professorial when he's at his worst. So, you know, I think he'll be more aggressive uh, with Romney. I think he'll try to call Romney out on things that, and repeatedly call Romney out right. on things that he doesn't uh, agree with him on. It, one thing, and we can get back to this, but the town hall format is interesting because because regular, regular people are right. going to be asking the questions. It makes it, I think, slightly it's harder to be super negative right. toward yeah. one another, but, but we can, you know. Let's uh, go to this Bush clip uh, from 1992 and we saw the master uh, Clinton handling the town hall uh, scenario Scenario, which we'll see on Tuesday. How has the national debt personally affected each of your lives? And if it hasn't, how can you honestly find a cure for the economic problems of the common people if you have no experience in what's ailing them? Well, I think the national debt affects everybody. Uh, obviously, it has has a lot to do with interest rates. It has. Oh, a, she's you, saying you personally. You, on a personal basis, how has it affected you? Has it affected you personally? Well, I'm sure it has. I love my grand grandchildren. I want to think how? that. And the follow-up part of that clip is, you know, Clinton yeah, being Clinton. And, and exactly. Um, number one. I am 100% sympathetic to George H.W. Bush here. That is a ridiculous it's an question. Odd qu it is an it, odd it's question. It's not an odd no, question. Yeah. It's just empirically, systematically wrong. <laughs> right. It is a mistaken. The, the debt ends up being, in tough economic times, like a floating signifier of a bad economy. Right. And, and it didn't affect Bush personally. And it right. wasn't affecting most of the people in that audience exactly. personally. Exactly. A recession was affecting them and a rising unemployment rate not driven by debt. By the way, same situation today uh, in, in a similar way. But... I do think this gets to something about the last debate, which is important to, to keep in mind. The flattering conception that a lot of Democrats have of the debate, and that Obama himself has put forward of the debate, is that what happened really is that if you read the transcript he won, it was just that right. he looked down too right. much, he like was sort of like the presentation, of it. it was all style. And I mean, that's a kind of a, a self-flattery, right? That he was just too thoughtful and cerebral and serious. <laughs> right. and we didn't get it. Was really Romney was too lying. Good. Yeah. I went back, I read the whole debate transcript. It was an agonizing, tedious exercise. And he came off, if anything, worse. Uh, what was really true about that debate, Ron, uh, Obama was almost only specific when talking about Romney. And it was very, very, very notable when he went back through and read it that he didn't really know what he was selling himself on. It was not at all clear what the case for Obama was in that debate. And so one thing you saw I I in that clip is it, it, it's not clear that George H.W. Bush really had a clear vision of what his economic plan was mm -hmm. because he had trouble defaulting to it very quickly. Usually, a politician given any question about the economy just says quickly what their plan is. Obama actually, I think, needs to come out in this debate, aside from being you know, more aggressive or more energetic, mm -hmm. he needs to have a somewhat better case for himself. And, and to me, what's going on in that campaign is a little bit of a mystery. I mean, it is a fact that Obama has a much more detailed jobs plan than Mitt Romney and the American Jobs Act, much more responsive to what's going on. It's a fact that his health care plan actually will ensure 30 million people if he's reelected. And it's a fact that he's nevertheless running a very small bore campaign on a million manufacturing jobs, things like that. They have polling that is why they're doing that. But I think that trying to get Obama to run a campaign campaign without vision or big ideas is actually hampering him in important ways as a candidate. And the polling is showing, I think, that people don't like that either. And I would add, just very quickly, I think Ezra's right, and I think I would add that if the contrast that you're trying to drive, and that clearly the contrast Joe Biden was trying to drive with Paul Ryan, and I think Obama was trying to drive but did unsuccessfully with, with, with Romney, is 
we're the specifics guys. Yeah. We're going to tell you what we're going to do. These guys, whether it's Romney's tax plan or what, they're not going to, they're, they're just going to say, oh, we'll figure it out later. That make them be specific. You have to, why not drive the contrast? You, to Ezra's point, you've already got plans out there. Right, it's not right. like you're going to take hits for proposing yeah. new stuff. But you've already got the plan out there. Talk a little bit about it to drive the contrast and say, here's what we're doing. What are you going to do? If I could just add one uh, thing. The most shocking thing about the first debate to me, the most shocking thing, was that at no point did President Obama come out and say, there is nothing in your plan, Governor Romney, that was not in the plan of George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush reform. There is nothing in your plan What's that is new? any different than the Republican policies of the last 10, 20, 30 years. Because that's actually an accurate hit on Romney. There's right. nothing that you couldn't have put in a Republican policy platform in 05 or 1999 or 1995. And that's a real problem. And by the way, it's not true for a lot of Obama's plans, but it was a fact of that debate that it seemed like Romney, who had the fresh thinking and the big totally. old ideas, and Obama, who had nothing new, even though really Obama's current platform is a sharp break with, say, the Democratic orthodoxy of the Clinton years, at least when it comes to jobs, if not when it comes to deficits. And, and one of the things I think Democrats had a problem with was he wasn't very engaged. He didn't offer a lot of critique and sort of fact-checking in the way that Biden did. Mm -hmm. I mean, Biden was sort of <laughs> instantly fact-checking. Let's uh, play this rebuttal clip from the uh, 2008 uh, debate that Obama had with McCain. If you're out there, my friend, and you've got employees and you've got kids, if you don't get adopt the health care plan that Senator Obama mandates, he's going to fine you. Now, Senator Obama, I'd like, still like to know what that fine's going to be. And I don't think that Joe right now wants to pay a fine when he is seeing such difficult times in America's economy. And I'm happy to talk to you, Joe, too, if you're out there. Uh, here's your fine, zero. Uh, you won't pay zero? a fine because, zero, because I, as I said in our last debate, and, and I'll repeat, John, I exempt small businesses from the requirement for large businesses that can afford to provide health care to their employees but are not doing it. And the Joe, of course, there is not Joe Biden, it's Joe the Plumber. Uh, oh, that how was, can uh, we forget? That's right, that was that uh, Joe, Joe the Plumber uh, debate. How does, how does Obama effectively fact check in the way that Biden did uh, and, 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 and sort of still come off as a nice guy because he's going to have the town hall? How does he balance he being did, aggressive? He did, a, he did a good enough job yeah. there, I thought. Um, what was striking to me about the Biden debate, what I think Biden really figured out how to do and that Obama got lost in doing, was that he didn't let Mitt Romney pull him deep and deep, or I'm sorry, Paul Ryan pull him deeper and deeper and deeper into the force. At a certain point, Biden seemed to recognize that he wasn't going to get anywhere, and he said he said over numbers. And so he would basically step back and he would say, "Look, you're the guy who has right. pushed Social Security privatization plans in 2005 and in 2008 and in 2009. You're the guy who one year ago had a plan to privatize Medicare and completely dissolve the traditional Medicare fee for service program. Um, who do you trust?" My party, which has created all these programs, has defended them steadfastly, or, or these guys. And to some degree, I actually think a little bit more of Obama's strategy, if he, if he were wise on it, would go in that direction. I mean, that kind of fact-to-fact -fact argument is useful, but I was really struck watching their first debate. I know these tax things pretty well, mm -hmm. um, and it was, to me, even almost unfollowable. It was just two guys, one guy yeah. saying, I've got it, you've got a $5 trillion tax, right, and the other guy saying, 15. I don't, There's numbers. then it just yeah. went back and forth. <laughs> yeah. So I think he actually does need to double down a little bit more on, look, you guys know me, and you know the sort of things I'm doing, and you know them too, you know right. Republicans. Are you really gonna sit here and believe a Republican who hasn't told you how he's gonna pay for his tax plan this is, after this is essentially essentially decades of, did, right? of unpaid for tax plans is gonna start paying for them now? Because I think maybe you want a little bit more proof. And I think what's hard for Obama in these debates is his natural tendency, I think broadly in politics, but definitely in these debates, is to make it kind of a, an intellectual battle of ideas. That kind of like, I'll put my ideas out there, they'll put theirs out there. To Ezra's point, this is a political endeavor too. And I think, you know, I think Obama wants to make sure he knows, like, well, I have mastery of this subject and you have mastery of this subject. We're gonna kind of clash and we'll let people decide. I think you have to frame the choice more pointedly. I think you have to say, look, here's what I've done. Here's what they said they would do. Which one do you want? And I would point out the Washington Post poll that came out this morning, 56% uh, of people say Obama is honest and trustworthy. 44% say uh, Romney. I, it, look, in an election that 
almost every number is like 49, 46, 49, 47. That's a real gap. Right. I think Joe Biden smartly, although I did think he was a little bit over the top generally, but I think smartly in terms of framing it said, these guys, he kept saying, these guys are gonna have you say X. These guys, to, to essentially say, like, look, who do you believe? You know, who are you gonna trust and into ultimately? The camera and, like, who are you yeah. gonna trust ultimately? Because that's the choice that people make. Look, partisans have already made up their minds. The people who haven't made up their mind yet are people who are like, nah, I don't know, what should I do? You know, it's, and it comes down to trust. Like, who do you think is going to do a better job? It's impossible to know, but who do you think is gonna do a better job? I think Obama, to Ezra's point, would do well to frame it in, that, in those terms. I don't know if it's in him, because I, I, I don't know if he, he doesn't like the theatrics of politics, never, except he very rarely engages in them. So I don't know if it's in him, but if it is, he, he should do it. I guarantee he's being advised to do it. One of the things uh, Democrats at least wanted was for Bain to come up, the 47% mm -hmm. to come up in that first debate, a 47% did come up in the second debate. Let's play the Romney tax cut, because this was, this was a time when Romney had to uh, answer questions about his uh, tax returns. You have refused to release your income tax forms, even though others, including Governor William Weld, U.S. Senator John Kerry, and your opponent, Shannon O'Brien, have released theirs. Do you have something to hide? <laughs> uh, I believe very deeply in my personal privacy, what little amount there's left. <laughs> and, uh, and, and in this case, uh, you made a couple of exceptions from your list. Um, Senator Kennedy, when I was running against him, boy, I told him, you've got to release those income tax returns of yours. And he said, no, I value my privacy. And, uh, and I think he was right and I was wrong. Uh, as a result, I do uh, share his view on this. I'm not going to release my income tax returns. Certainly more likely that issues like this, the tax return, Bain, 47%, might come up from regular folks in the audience. How does uh, Romney handle them? How does Obama handle them? Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of funny when Democrats kept saying they wanted 47% to come up, just like Republicans want you to build it. You don't do that sometimes in a debate because you're worried about the counterattack. Right. You're worried when they just says, look, it just came out wrong. I won't care about 100%. And it gives him an opportunity to answer a question about himself. You don't want him to be able and to you answer. Know they're, so you know they're ready they're for it. Yeah, ready. sometimes right. people, people think two or three steps ahead in these debate planning. In terms of Romney's tax returns, in terms of his tax plan, you need to get who, this is the classic question of a debate. What is the question your opponent doesn't want the debate to be about? What, do you, what does he not want to answer? And the big mistake on taxes Obama made in the first debate was he made the question, do you have a $5 trillion tax plan? Mm -hmm. Romney just says he doesn't. He's right. always said he doesn't. That wasn't a change, as some liberals said it was. It's, this has always been his argument. The question Romney can't answer is, what will you cut? Right. What will you say to convince me or to convince anyone that you actually have run these numbers and made them work? Because nobody thinks you can make these numbers work, or so just about nobody thinks you can make them work. So whether it's the tax returns or 47% or taxes, and from Romney to Obama, of course, whether it's the economy or getting unemployment under 8% or whatever it is, there needs to be serious thought Given that your opponent is a smart guy, is going to try to obey it or going to try to flip the tables, what is a question that he simply does not have a good answer to? Because he did have a pretty good answer to, you're saying I have a $5 trillion tax plan, and I don't, and I swear I would never sign such a thing. Right. He doesn't have a good answer to, why won't you tell us anything? Why will you not give us one deduction you would cut? And I, I hate to keep citing Biden, because I did think that, I, I did when I watched the debate, I was kind of, mesmerized by the Biden kind of reactions, but as you think about what Biden did in the debate, um, if not tonally, rhetorically, one thing he did really well was when Paul Ryan was talking about the tax plan, he, he said, that's impossible. Nope, doesn't add up. <laughs> Never nope. been done, yeah. Again, Barack Obama's not probably going to do it in that same format, but I do think it is smart of Obama to try to push on those things. And, and it's smart for a couple reasons. It's smart to Ezra's point because it forces Romney to get into detail he doesn't want to get into detail or look like he's avoiding de yeah. detail. Right. Second, <clears throat> one thing we know about Mitt Romney through the 200 debates there have been, but primary and now there, you know, there were so many in the primary and now, is he's good when he's kind of within his zone. When pressed, legitimately he pressed, get a little he gets, yeah, he's not great on his feet in those moments. The $10,000 bet, the Rick Perry thing, I hate to come back to it, but it's what happened there, if you look to the run-up to it, is Perry is pressing him on immigration. Uh, and he's pressing him in a way that's very awkward for Romney. Again, Romney is a rule follower. It's why he's generally good at these debates, because there are rules you can kind of memorize yeah. going in. Two minutes you can respond. memorize kind of what you want to say. You can know where you want to say it. He's good at making presentations. He's a businessman. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
What he's not good at, and you don't get it much if you are in doing a business presentation, not necessarily good at being directly and aggressively challenged on things. He gets flustered. Remember that the debate? Anderson? Anderson, he's like appealing for right, someone right. to step in. Like a whole monitor. Yeah. Again, it's not Obama's nature to do that. He didn't do it in the 08 debates really at all. He kind of ignored yeah. McCain, by and large, because uh, he could. Uh, but I wonder if he would be well served to try to push on uh, exactly Ezra's point, the specifics on yeah. the tax plan. Or just the healthcare to, plan. Right. Or the financial just to regulation try to, plan. Just or to the, try to, to try get try. him. <laughs> yeah. Because Romney really didn't have to sweat in that first debate. He, yeah. he yeah. just started to roll after about the first 15 minutes. He kind of realized, oh, well, this is what Obama's going to do, and this is what I'm going to do. And Obama never got him out of his comfort zone. Yeah. And to me, that's another key in debates. It's Ezra's right. you got to try and get the question the other guy doesn't want to answer. And in so doing, you put them off their game a little bit, and then you can kind of capitalize. And R Romney never got off his game. He didn't. Well, we will look forward uh, to this debate on Tuesday. It might not change anything. We don't know if the last will one anything did change anything. either. But uh, thank you, boys, for joining me. Thank you. Uh, and enjoy the debate.